presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. The meek shall inherit the earth, but surely not today. Indeed, it wouldn't be surprising if it didn't happen next week, or next month, or even next year. In order to be a successful member of the meek, one requires patience. Indeed, the thing the meek do better than anyone else is to endure injustice with patience. And yet there is a human limit to endurance, while obviously there is no limit to injustice. Something has to give. Can you describe the man who killed my son? Oh, no. No. But you saw the man. I didn't. I swear I didn't. That isn't true. Who are you to come busting in and giving me the third degree? Get out! What did he look like? Mister, I got a husband and kids. Let me alone. What did he look like? Get out! Yes, I shall get out, but I shall return tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and I'll ask you again, and again, and you will not know a moment's peace until you tell me. Our mystery drama, Blood Red Roses was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. it seems, a narrow and slippery pathway between poetry and practicality. Poetry tells us to love thy neighbor. Practicality warns us, don't stick your neck out. Don't get involved. These are the voices of practicality. And in so many cases, they seem to prevail. Well, we're about to witness an exercise in both poetry and practicality. And you may judge which course has been the most productive. I, I have to stop. I, I gotta rest. I, I can't run anymore. Go uh, open the door. Quick, open it up. Open. What do you want? Please, lady, let me, let me in. You're in. You? What do you want? Let me in, please. Just let me hide for a minute. Hide? They're after me. They'll kill me. Go away. For God's sake. Go away, I'll scream. They'll kill me. Go away, please. Go away. Somebody. Somebody's got to hide me. Please. Please. Yes? Please, please help me. Uh, are you in trouble? Yeah, the guys are coming after me. Help me. Oh, come in. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I shouldn't come in. Well, why not? Because if they find me here, they can kill you, too. Well, maybe we better call the police. Oh, no. No. But that's what the police are for, to help. No. Well, why are those guys after you? Because I knew too much. I talked too much. And I got no place to hide. Well, sit down. Y you will not be killed here. Oh, maybe not. You... You got a gun? This is a sanctuary. A what? A sanctuary. The sanctuary of a church. What church? My church. A church? Well, where's the altar? Where's the cross? This is the church of the heart. It is my ministry to help those in need. Pray with me. Are you crazy? Pray to whatever God watched over your childhood. In whatever language you ever spoke to him. But pray from the heart. The spirit. In here. In here. The game's right in here. Oh, it's Joe. It's Joe. They found me. Come on, open up in there. Open up. We'll put the gun on. I told you. I told you to let me get out of here. Now it's too late. Let us pray. Open up. The door is unlocked. Here. Yeah, there he is. Why do you enter this house? Knock him off, Albie. Joe. Joe, I'm gone. I know that. But this guy, this priest. Ah, what are you trying to pull? What priest? Don't kill him, Joe. 
He didn't do anything. You must not commit violence in this house. I cannot permit let you to... Let my arm, you not let go. Oh, my baby. Listen. Uh, I forgive you. He's still alive, Albie. I forgive... You... Nick. Nick, please. Let me alone, Anna. Look, you can't sit here in the room day and night. At, at least, eat something. <laughs> eat something. That will make everything all right. Eat something, and it will bring Stephen back to life. Oh, just eat something to keep up your strength. Yes. I need my strength. I need strength to mourn him. That, that very nice police lieutenant called on the telephone. He said, as soon as they find the man who who killed... Yes. They, they, they'll be able to find the man. Is that true? Yes, Nick. You see, they, they have their ways. Why don't they ask me who killed him? Ask you. Uh, I know who killed Steve. Nick. I killed him. I killed my own son. Oh, Nick, you don't know what you're saying. I killed him because I failed him as a father. It's God's will that we go on living. I taught him the wrong things. Would he want you to go mad with grief? It was my duty as a father to arm him. I won't listen to... To strengthen him for the battle of life. What are you saying? What did I teach him? Oh. You taught him to be honest, to be decent. Ah, I betrayed him. No. I disarmed him. I sent him naked and defenseless into the jungle. I filled his head with nonsense. Please, Nick, we, we must go on somehow. I said to him, my son, we live because of God's love. It's true. It's a lie. Oh, this isn't you talking... This isn't the Nick I've been married to for 40 years. Oh, yes, yes. That much is true. I am no longer the same Nick. The same stupid Nick. The childish Nick. The Nick who believed in miracles. Oh, please, don't say any more now. You, you really don't mean these things. Oh, Mr. Ardmore called. He, he wants to know if you'll look after his gardens this year as usual. No. Nick, if you don't work, you'll... You must do something to keep your mind busy. My mind is busy enough, Anna. I have other things to think about. What things, Nick? What things? What things? It only proves that women cannot understand what must be done. I must kill the man who murdered my son. Even as I say these words, I feel a chill. I never spoke this way. I never thought this way. But until now, I never had reason to. Lieutenant Daly. Who? Well, can't you tell him I'm out? Look, I feel sorry for him, too, but what can I do about it? All right, send him in. Uh, what does this old guy want from me, anyhow? Ah, Mr. Burko, come in, sit down. Oh, thank you. I, uh, know what you're here to ask me. Yes. And let me tell you, um, we're working on it. Are there any results? Well, it was a gangland killing. We know that much. Yes. The guy they were after was a stool pigeon. Uh, excuse me? Oh, uh, uh, an informer. Oh, yes. Well, the problem is, uh, any one of a number of well-known racketeers could have ordered the hit. We don't know which gang, which uh, outfit is responsible. Yeah, but the gunmen, they prowled through the neighborhood. They were seen. Surely they can be described. By whom? By uh, witnesses. We can't find any. But it is a crowded street. Someone saw them. 
people are frightened. It is known that the fugitive ran from door to door, and each door was closed to him. Yes, the old story. Nobody wanted to get involved. Now, you can't blame people too much, you know. They're, they're not scared. Have you spoken to the people? Yes, Mr. Burko, but we can't force people to testify. Uh, maybe if I spoke to them... What makes you think they would listen to you? I, I would ask them in a certain way. Yeah? Um, may I speak with you? My name is Nicholas Birko. I am Stephen Birko's father. Oh. Oh, yeah. You want to come in? Oh, thank you. Well, won't you sit down? Uh, can I get you something? A cup of tea, maybe? No, no, thank you. Huh. Oh, that, that son of yours, he, he was a saint. He's always there when you needed him. You ought to be so proud. Everybody in the neighborhood was crazy about him. The animals had killed him. The chair's too good for him. Can you describe the men who killed him? Oh, no, I... No, I, I, I really didn't get a good look at him. Describe them, please. Oh, Mr. Burko, look, I, I'm really very busy. I, I don't believe you. What did they look like? I, I think you'd better leave. You're frightened, aren't you? Look, who, who asked your son to be a hero? He asked for it, and he got it. Now, now, please, you better go. I will keep asking you. Please, I've got a husband and kids. I've got to protect my own. I won't stop asking you. Will you get out? Yes. And I will wait. For you to tell me, I will wait outside. I will stand in the street in front of your door, day and night. And I promise you, you will not know a moment's peace until you tell me. Nick? Oh, Anna, Anna, oh. Anna I'm sorry. I, I woke you, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Well, where are you going? It's only six o'clock in the morning. Uh, 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 out. Oh, Nick. You can't keep doing this. I can. I will. I must. You just stand on the corner outside that woman's flat. I'll go back to sleep. People think you're insane. People may think as they like. Oh, Nick. You have to go back to work. This is my work. Your customers. They'll have to hire other landscape artists. All the flowers you planted for so many good people. I can't be helped. But what good does it do? Your only son was murdered, and you have no wish to avenge his death? Uh, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Ah, uh, yes. But since the Lord shows no sign of taking it, I'll have to attend to it myself. Nick, it's raining outside. It's also raining on my son's grave. Oh. If you could only find peace. I will. On the day I avenge his death. They didn't know what to do about me in that neighborhood. They didn't know what to say to me. So, they did nothing. And they said nothing. And they pretended I wasn't there. But I was. Every day, rain and sunshine. And she would go in and out of her house, and she'd go right past me without a word. And I made no move to stop her, to talk to her. I just looked at her. And then I realized she was going to talk to me. Because she was no longer walking past me, she was beginning to run. And every day she would run faster. And I knew there had to be a limit to how fast she could run. And on that day, she would stop running. And she would walk up to me and she would say... You... You win. You win. I'll, I'll tell you everything. I, I just can't run from you anymore. Persistence has paid off. She's going to describe those killers. Joe, Albie, weren't those the names we heard? But what can Nick Burko do with the information? He talks about revenge, but these are professional hoodlums. 
Well, he has a second act in which to figure out a course of action. He's a quiet man, a humble man, a meek man. It is doubtful that he ever entertained a violent thought or performed a violent action in his life. And yet... He proposes to hunt down the professional killers of his only son. Don't sell him short. He was able to get what the police couldn't. A description of the gunmen. Joe? Yeah, it has to be Joe Murray. He's got blonde hair. He's over six feet. Yeah, it's got to be him. And Albie? Albie's his sidekick, Albie Perry. And so, now, Lieutenant, you know who they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, will this woman testify in court? It doesn't matter. Oh, but it does. If she won't testify, we have no witness. And therefore, no case. And these guys go free. I am not concerned with that, Lieutenant Dale. I thought you wanted to get the guys who killed your son. These men are merely servants. Isn't that true? Servants of a boss. Oh, yes. That's certainly true. It's this boss who hires them and commands them. He is the real murderer. Isn't that true? Well, yeah. And you said, if you knew the employee, the hireling, you could identify the employer, the boss. I can, but it won't do us any good. Once again, we have no evidence. Who is the boss who orders these two men to kill? They work for Jerry Bissett. Jerry Bissett? Yeah. Where can I find him? What do you mean? Where can you find him? What do you think you can do? I will make him pay for the murder of my son. No, but you can't. Take the law into your own hands. Lieutenant, I find myself in this position only because the law has failed. Look, I know how you feel, Mr. Burko. Huh? Has an only son of yours been murdered? Well, no. Well, then you don't know how I feel. Do you know what you're up against? This guy, Jerry Bazette, he's got connections all the way into Washington, D.C. And so far, he can't be touched. Now, what are you planning? Say, uh, uh, let's say you want to shoot him, huh? How do you think you could get at him? The guy is guarded tighter than Fort Knox, Kentucky. I thanked him. I went home. And then... I almost broke into tears. I realized how helpless I was. Oh, Nick, you must rid your mind of all these thoughts. Ah, I must destroy that man the way he has destroyed me. Nick, you cannot be destroyed. You have too much good in you. How? Tell me, Anna, how? I've never held a gun in my hand. I, I can't stand even the thought of a knife. Nick, you can't kill this man. He's already dead. And even if I had the weapon, how could I get close enough to him? His soul has died. He's not worth your trouble. Help me think of a way. Would Steve want you to kill him? Steve? Hmm? No. But only because I filled his head with nonsense. Don't use that word. What you taught him was not nonsense. Love, love, my son. Look about you and see God's love. I filled his head with this it's nonsense. And he believed it. He believed it. And you don't believe it? No more. Now, let me be free to think. About what? About what I must do. Suddenly, I felt as if a weight had been lifted from my mind. Now, for some reason, everything was so clear. Jerry Bissett. The untouchable Jerry Bissett. I would find a way somehow. And so, instead of wringing my hands and feeling sorry for myself, I decided to act. First, I must learn everything there was to know about Jerry Bissett. In the beginning, Lieutenant Daly refused to talk to me, but I haunted his office just as I did that lady street corner, and I heard some gossip, and I took advantage of it. 
What are these? Those are roses, Lieutenant. I know they're roses. I never saw such beautiful ones. I understand your wife loves to grow roses. Yeah, what kind are they? It's a rose I have developed myself. Uh, I will tell her how to plant them, how to... Now, hold on a minute. Uh, why are you This is a bribe. Oh, no, no, I can't take a... Uh... And what am I asking for? Just information on Jerry Rizek. But you'll only do something stupid and get yourself killed. Well, that's my right as a citizen, isn't it? <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> roses. Why? Roses just happen to be Jerry Bissett's hobby. What? This animal appreciates the beauty of a rose? Uh, many of these animals have become domesticated in the... Certain minor matters. They breed flowers, horses, dogs. They buy art. Roses. Yeah. He exhibits at all the shows. At the shows. <laughs> What's funny, Nick? <laughs> roses. As simple as that. Roses. My blood red roses. <laughs> That night, I wrote a letter. I went to the library to write this letter because from now on, Anna must not be aware of what I meant to do. I must keep her out of it. Uh, dear Mr. Pizet, I have developed what I thought was a new flower, which I call the blood red rose. A friend has told me that you have displayed such a rose at a show in the South. Will you please accept these flowers from one lover of roses to another and tell me if they are the same as yours? Nick. Who was at the door? Oh, the mailman. He gave me this letter. The envelope. Ah. Have you ever seen such an envelope? It's, it's like parchment. Yeah, I see. And it, it just has the initials... J.B. Nick, where are you going? In the bedroom. Dear Mr. Burko, it was kind of you to send me the flowers. Even kinder to think that I could grow anything as magnificent as your blood-red rose. Roses, as you may have heard, are my consuming passion. When I find a fellow aficionado, I, I got to meet him, talk with him. Make them my friend. Please let me know what day would be convenient for you to visit. I should be very happy to send a car for you. A minute, please. Yes? Uh, is this the house of Nicholas Burko? Oh. Who are you? Uh, he's expecting us, ma'am. Who's at the door, Anna? Uh, Mr. Burko, I'm Mr. Bazette's chauffeur. <laughs> Nick, what does this mean? Ah, no, everything is all right. I'm ready to go with you now, mister. Uh, uh, just uh, call me Joe. Joe. I could hear suddenly the voice of Lieutenant Daly. Joe. Yeah, it has to be Joe Murray. He's got blonde hair. And Albie's his sidekick. Tall, blonde-haired Joe and I walked downstairs and into the street and over to the curb where a large limousine was waiting. And behind the wheel was another man. Okay, Albie, let's move. Joe and Albie, the two men who had murdered my son. And here I was, riding in a car with them. <laughs> Miss Burko, huh? Well, let me shake your hand. I thought I knew everyone who knew anything about roses in this world, but you are a discovery. Like finding a, a Rembrandt in the attic. I can't call you Mr. Burko. We gotta be Nick and Jerry, huh? The way we feel about roses, why, we, we got more in common than most brothers. My heart... It almost failed me. This man, dressed like a 
a dandy who used cologne. This man who it seemed I could almost crush with my two hands, this man was the terrible Jerry Bizet. No, must be a mistake. What do you do, Nick? Ah, I work as a gardener. (laughs) I got to correct you. You don't work. You, you create. And you're not a gardener. You're, you're an artist. Who are you with? I work for myself. Well, work for yourself. But work for me. Turn yourself loose on this estate, Nick. And uh, name your price. Yes, but I... Be uh, what used to be called artist in residence, huh? Well, that's what you were meant to be. And let me function as I was intended, as a as a patron of the arts. <laughs> you and me, Nick, it was meant to be. Was I going mad? I had come here to kill this man. And now we were talking about my working for him. This, this depraved killer who had the responsibility for Stevie's death. What stopped me from ending his life right here, right now? Hey, Pop, I might have known you'd be out here. Oh, uh, Junior, I'd like you to meet Nick Burko. Hiya. That's uh, my son, Jerome Francis Bizet Jr. Oh, how do you do? Nick developed that rose I showed you, the blood red rose. Yeah, it's a great thrill, Pop. I need some dough. You got your allowance yesterday. Come on, you know me, Pop. I can't stay away from that wheel. Junior, you've got to learn... Come on, come on. What's the lecture? You own the joint. Every dollar I lose comes back to you. You just keep the money moving, right? Mr. Roberts tells me you ain't been to the office in a week. Make that a month. The old guy's covering up for me. Junior, you've got to do something productive. Why? My old man's got millions. What do I have to work for? Uh, suppose we discuss this some other time, huh? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Look at Mr. Burko. He's embarrassed. It's okay, Mr. Burko. I can tell. You're a gentleman of the old school. You're lord and master in your house. And when you talk, the wife and kiddies jump, right? A junior? That is enough. Mr. Burko is a true son of the soil. Honest, rugged, like a rock. Well, you know what we do around here, Mr. Burko? Junior! We kill people. That's right. See, we're very polite. We're very sophisticated. We go to the opera, we visit the museums, we're good neighbors, we give to charities. But if you don't do what we tell you, if you don't buy what we sell you, we kill you. You shut up, punk! Ah, that's the dad I know and love. Well, good day to you, Mr. Burko. Mr. Luther Burbank Burko? Ah, kids, kids. You got any kids, Nick? No. Kids. He's 26. 26. Now, why, why, why does he do these things to me? Why can't he become a serious person? The world is open up to him. Whatever he wants to be, I can buy for him. Doctor, lawyer, name it. What am I working for? What am I living for? What have I got? Just this kid. And now I knew. I would not kill him by ending his life. That would be too short, too merciful. I would kill him the way he killed me, by taking away what had made my life worthwhile. I would strike at him through his son, his only child. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a son for a son. And that is the price. The blood price. The only problem is, can Nick Burko convince himself to exact it? Can a man suddenly overcome the habits of a lifetime? The snake can shed its skin, but can the leopard change its spots? There will be both shedding and changing when I return shortly with Act Three. Revenge is a fire that needs to be fed. 
And the longer it burns, the more fuel it consumes. Until finally, it burns everything and everyone as it rages out of control. Such a conflagration has already been started. Hello, Anna. Oh, Nick, you, you're home. Why shouldn't I be home? I live here. Where should I go? Oh, Nick, I, I was so frightened. You you were taken to the house of that, that gangster chief. Gangster chief? Why, Mr. Bizet is what they call uh, uh, an eccentric millionaire. I don't understand. The man is devoted to roses, as I am. I sent him some blood reds. He asked me to work for him. Oh, you, you would work for Anna. him? Anna. Life goes on. He killed our son. Who says that? I, I don't understand, Nick. Our son I... was murdered by hoodlums, engaged in a private quarrel. Who the killers were, we may never know. We have rumor, we have gossip. Nick, what are you going to do to him? I will not do anything to him. It isn't true. Why should I do anything to him? He is responsible for Steve's death. We know that. And if he is, are we not commanded to forgive? I'm afraid. Of what? Of you. Nick, listen to me. You, you're different. Different from other men. Ah, what are you saying? What other men have you known? Believe me. There is in you a force, a power. Oh, Nick. Anna, you really don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me. I married you because... because I could feel this power. Power? What power? You have the power of the earth. The forces of the earth are in you. You're a man of the earth. Look at what you can bring forth from the ground. Anna, I'm hungry. Is supper prepared? He is a bandit chief. Bandit chief, we are back in the old country. He is surrounded by fierce, heavily armed men. I wish you would listen to me, my dear Anna. And yet, yet you have the power to destroy him. Because no one and nothing can stop you. Must I eat my supper in some cafeteria? Uh, what, what are you going to do to this man? How are you going to kill him? <laughs> Women... And mine is the best of them. And even she has no understanding. I will take this man's son from him. I will rob him of the only precious thing in his life. But it seemed I must wait. He wasn't there the next day. Or the next weeks. Months went by. It's a miracle. This garden, it's a miracle. You know something? Nothing ever grew here before. But I saw this garden before I went to work. It was a hustle. It was all brought in, all brought in, every inch of dirt. This place could only grow weeds. Oh, I cannot believe that. You know what I told the old man. I said you got too much blood in the ground. Why are you unhappy? Unhappy? Why should I be unhappy? I'm the one who has the question. Who are you to question me? What do you know? What do you know about anything? What do you know? What do you know about anything? I had heard those words before. They were spoken to me by my own son. My own son. And with great fire and passion. What do you know? What do you know about anything? You're in America now for crying out loud. You're not some ignorant European peasant. What are you trying to say to me, Stephen? Oh, wise up. You walk around all day with dirt on your shoes and manure on your hands. What do you know about anything? Y you have to be smart in this country. Because what counts here is the almighty buck. That's what people understand. That's what people respect. And that's what I'm out to get. Stephen... Listen to me. I know what you're going to say, and I won't buy it. Thief, look at this. Look at this rose. So what? It's just a rose. No, 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 no. It's a special rose. It's my very own rose. It never existed before. This, this blood red rose. All the money in the world could never buy this rose. Steve, all 
the money in the world could never buy this boat. Hey, hey, who are you talking to, Nick? You all right? Ah, forgive me. Sometimes... Besides, I... what do you mean? All the money in the world can't buy that rose. It's for sale, isn't it? Well, what I mean is that all of the money in the world could not buy that rose before it existed. With all your wealth, my son, with all your power, let me see you cause a rose to rise from this ground. Not even a weed will obey you if it isn't God's will. The moment it had come and gone. How could I kill him when I was talking about God? And then a thought flashed into my mind. I wasn't going to kill him. I was going to save him. I knew I was going to save him. And I realized that I wanted to save him more than I wanted anything else in the world. Tell me something, Nick. What are you doing to my boy? Huh? What am I doing? I mean, well, he, he stays home. He doesn't run around. He's very quiet. I see him in the gardens all the time. I don't think I'm doing anything. No, he's, he's finally showing signs of turning into a very serious person. And I have to have him that way to run my business. Anyhow, whatever it is you're doing, Nick, keep it up. How did you get that rose to be such a red color? Such a blood red? That's not the way to, to say it. This rose does not obey me. It does not do what I command or desire. I only help it to become what it must be. What God has intended it to be. God certainly did not intend for any of us to lie, rob, murder. He only wanted us to love each other. <laughs> Love. Ah, this world needs so much love. What is it that you wanted to be? What was it that you wanted to do? I... I wanted to help people. Oh, that's a fine answer. And you have money. No. My father has money. But I won't touch it. It's blood money. How can you help without money? I'll give myself. There was a young guy. I read about him in the papers. It was a long time ago. I don't even remember his name. He went down into the slums. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't a doctor. He wasn't a lawyer. But he was there. And he did what he could. He was a most unusual young man. Not everyone could do what he did. I know. And maybe I can't either. But I'm going to try. You're crazy. Where are you going? I'm leaving, Father. Well, what are you leaving? You. This. Everything. You mean you're going to live in some filthy rattle, huh? Can't live here. Why? Because I finally found out who I am. What I am and what I want to do. You're my son. You can't give this up. You can't. Goodbye, Father. But what was it for? Who was it for? Why did I do it? For you. I don't want it. Stay with me, Junior. Why, we can own the world. Come with me, Father. We can have the world. Oh, you'll come back. You'll come crawling back on your hands and knees. You'll get bit by the first rat. Hit. By the first rock. Yeah. Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye. Could I have some of those roses? Oh, of course. Thanks. Blood red roses. Goodbye. Nick, what's gotten into that boy? Is the whole world gone crazy? Why don't you go and live with him? You know what you're talking about? 
He has chosen a new way of life. Unless that way becomes your way, you'll never see him again. How can I stop being Jerry Bizet? How? Answer me. You can't. And that's why he's been taken away from you. You've lost him forever. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a son for a son. Payment in kind. And that's the most satisfying revenge there is. And so Jerry Bizet loses a son. Just the way Nick Perko lost a son. And you may say, well, Jerry's loss certainly doesn't compare with Nick's. But it does. It does. For a son is the reason a father dreams. And now, Jerry's dreams are as dead as Nick's. I'll be back shortly. Roses, the traditional flowers of romance. The red rose of courage and valor. The white rose of purity and hope. What's in a name? Everything. The bard to the contrary notwithstanding. Would a rose by any other name smell as sweet? Probably. But who would believe it? Our cast included Robert Dryden, Bryna Rayburn, Arnold Moss, William Redfield, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>